In this lesson, we'll be using a MoGraph cloner to create a stack of coins. Okay, so let's go ahead and we've got our original coin here and I'm going to duplicate it just by control dragging and we'll call this MoGraph coin. And then let's go ahead and create a MoGraph cloner. So we'll go up to MoGraph, drop in a cloner, and we'll put our MoGraph coin underneath that. Now I'm going to put that original coin over here back at the bottom because eventually we'll want to put that coin that we were using before um, over here as part of our legend. So we'll need to duplicate that and rename it for the legend later on. But for now, let's just focus on the cloner. So I'm going to scrub forward a little bit so we can see all of our pieces. And um, taking a look at this, it looks like our count is only two on that first one. So I'll just change the count to two. And then we also realize that that needs to be much smaller and we probably also want our axis to be kind of right underneath the first coin. So I'm going to middle click and go into my front view and we'll just enable that axis and move it over. So it looks like when you have this for the cloner, it's not going to move in relation like it does for the coin. So let's actually move the axis for the coin. And you can see how now that's kind of working a little bit better. It works a little bit differently because they're both moving. But now with the cloner selected, you can see how it's just easier to move this around here. Now it still is, has a little bit of an offset. So I think what we should do is actually try to get, now that this is overlapping, just get this MoGraph coin over here right into this area. Okay? So now my axis is just right there in the middle. If I pull this out from underneath the cloner though, you can see that it's still kind of floating over to the side. So let's just get that into place and then we'll move our axis over also into place. So we're just starting at the same place that the cloner is. This is just going to simplify it for you. Okay, so now if I drop the coin under the cloner, I can move the cloner around and I have a lot easier time. So you see I have the cloner selected and it's just working way better. Okay, so let's put this in position and also one of the things we want to take into consideration is that the coin we're using for the legend over on the side is way bigger than the one that we actually want to be in here so we'll probably want to go into our original coin grab our scale and make it a little bit smaller so both of them can fit side by side okay so that's much better and we actually haven't changed the scale of our cloner just that original coin so let's come in and start playing around with some of the settings for our cloner. So right now, there's a pretty big offset in the Y. And we'll probably want to take that down so that they're almost sitting on top of each other. Kind of like this. And then eventually we'll want to probably add a little bit of a rotation animation. But first, I want to just make sure that that looks pretty good. And I think that it does. So if I um, want to rename that cloner, it would be called matching funding because the first column, if we look back at our Illustrator file, um, looks like the first com, uh, column is actually federal funding followed by matching funding. So these would be the Navy ones that we just now set up. So they're actually the same height, so we would just be able to duplicate over onto this one. So let's just go ahead and add a little bit of an animation to these because it's going to be way faster to duplicate that animation later on. So what we can do is kind of let's add this sort of a twofold process. So I'm going to start out at the beginning when these haven't even very, really revealed very much. Maybe, maybe actually around 20 so there's a little bit there to work with. 
and I'm going to pull this way up above the text, okay? So the cloner has a position in its coordinates now, the whole cloner, not just in the object tab. And I'll go ahead and key that only in the Y. I'm not going to key it in the X because later I want to be able to move it in the X and not have to worry about it snapping around because of a key. And I'm only going to be moving it up and down. Okay, so then let's give that about, let's give it about 13 frames to come back into position. So on frame 33, I'll pull this back down into place just like that. And then I'll go ahead and key the Y again. So control click that. So you can see how that's going to drop down really nicely. Now I think that I would like for this to go a little bit faster at the beginning and then slow down considerably at the end. So maybe right here on frame 30, actually I think on frame 32, I'll set another key for the Y. And then I'll grab the key that was on frame 32 or 33 and pull that forward to 40. Now it does create a little bit of a boomerang. So let's go into our F curves and fix that. I'll just right click my cloner, go to show F curves. And you can see that that dips down below the line. So all we have to do is pull this back up like that. Now this actually does cause this to be a little bit higher. So if we want it to make it lower first and really slow that down, and then we rekey it by control clicking, you'll see it moves that down some. So we can change that by coming in here and actually adjusting the handle. So if I hold shift and I grab this handle, you'll see how I'm only adjusting on this one side. So I want to zoom in really close and make sure that I'm not creating any kind of a kink in there. I'm just holding shift and making sure that that is as flat as it can be over here without going underneath that dotted line. So now let's play back and see how it looks. So we get this really nice slow down here at the end where we add some frames to that. And you can make that last longer if you want, if you want to pull that forward maybe to 45 or so. You just want to make sure that you never go below that green dotted line. Okay, so I think that that looks really nice for the way that those are going to come in. And there's a few other little tweaks we could add to it, I think, to make it more interesting out here. So let's come back in the next lesson and explore that a little bit.